Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux, and it's been quite a while since I've said that because, well, there's been a lot going on with life and all of that, you know, important stuff. And to be honest, I can't actually really remember what I was doing in this series. Obviously, this is the mission that we sent off in the last episode, arriving at Hydrus, and that is what this entire episode is going to be on, what we're actually going to be doing around Hydrus with this rather large, chunky mission that has almost everything that you could ever want from an interplanetary mission except some sort of flying contraption. I do remember that, that's the only thing that I was missing. I, I would have quite liked to have made some sort of Hydrus helicopter, but no, alas, I did not think of that whilst I was designing this mission. Anyway, we have arrived at Hydrus, we burnt our way over at the end of the last episode, if I recall correctly, and we are now there. So this is the first piece that we are going to detach from the main body of that kind of mothership that we've got going on. This is going to be a telescope that should hopefully scan the planetary bodies in the nearby vicinity, in the, in the local area, and see if they have any liquid deuterium and liquid helium present on those said bodies. Because I want to find that stuff because later on, well, down the line, it would be very nice to be able to harvest that so we can start thinking about fusion power. That is something that I am going to want to do. Fusion is very tasty and it is going to provide us with an awful lot of electric charge, which we're going to use to, you know, make big and grand things. Anyway, we have separated that telescope and we are going to leave that in a highly elliptical orbit. We're pointing it at Hydron, which is the moon of Hydrus at the moment, and we're just going to see what that can pick up. It does actually say that Hydron, the moon, does have liquid helium on it, I believe, but since getting those results and actually visiting Hydron a little bit closer up, I can't find any of that stuff using Scansat, so it's a, it's a little bit problematic. I'm not sure what really we do have over there, but it's something that maybe we'll send a mission in the future to find out really what's going on with that moon. Anyway, what we are doing now is we have changed the entire mission's inclination to be polar, and we released this small little satellite, which has every single scanning capability on it that you could possibly want. We're going to get everything, I think, except for a high resolution visual imaging re thingy me jiggy. <laughs> I, lost, I, I lost track of my words there. I'm, I'm actually a little bit unwell at the moment, too. And that is one reason why I didn't really want to do these voiceovers yet, because I have got a cough, I've got a cold, it's not COVID, and it's, it's a bit of a struggle to talk, and thinking of the words at the same time may be a little bit difficult, but yes, I did want to get back to making videos, and I'm sure at some point in this episode as well I'll talk about what I've been doing and why I haven't released for over two months, or it's, it's been about two months. But anyway, yes, we set up that scanning satellite, that was all good. Now what we're going to do is we are going to come back to the main mission, and we are going to bring ourselves down into a nice, low, circular hydrous orbit. Because we are going to be releasing the craft that is on top of this mothership. Like so! And it is very janky, we knock all of the landing legs off in, <laughs> in kind of weird positions. Yes, I didn't really design this terribly well, that was a little bit concerning, but luckily nothing broke. As, as far as I can remember, I did film all of this about two months ago. Yeah, this, this is really old footage. I have since filmed some new footage for this series that I've been doing over the past week, but yes, it's a struggle to remember what I was doing with all of these missions. But I think just generally looking at what I'm describing, I can kind of piece it all together. Anyway, this is going to be a mission that we are going to send down to the surface of Hydrus, and then we are going to return to orbit. We're, we're doing a orbital return, or we're, we're basically just going down, grabbing some samples, getting all of the science that we absolutely can. Then we're going to return to the mothership and we will put all of that science in the mothership before sending it back home. Because obviously the whole feature of this mission is a return from Hydrus. Not because I really want to see the Delta V requirements needed for a return from Hydrus, it's just that I wanted science. There's a lot of stuff that I want to unlock to do with base building and sustainability on different planets for our Kerbals. 
and we don't have that at the moment and we're still quite a long way off in terms of science to get all of that and I thought well a return mission would just get us loads we can send science juniors mystery goos we can throw them in a capsule and we can send them all back to road and we should hopefully get quite a lot of science points by the end of this mission which spoiler alert we do we get <laughs> we get a considerably large amount of science which is very nice and it's going to unlock us some very tasty parts for the future. Anyway, we have made our way through most of Hydrus's atmosphere now. The parachutes have deployed. We're going a whopping 5.1 meters per second. And very gently, we do touch down upon the surface with that rather large landing marker guiding us most of the way. Anyway. We did land at night, so I do time warp heads morning so that those solar panels can gain us some electric charge and we are able to run every single experiment that we do have on this device. And as far as I'm aware, it is every experiment that I do have unlocked to me at the moment. And a lot of these are recoverable experiments, so of course what we are going to do is we are going to keep those and we are going to transfer those across to the mothership and do what I said earlier, send that off on its way to back to road and we'll recover it again. Loads of science, it's gonna be glorious. Anyway, with all of that being done, we are ready to take off and we are using one of the OPT liquid fuel engines for the first stage of this. It's not great in like surface level specific impulse, it isn't great, but it has absolutely fantastic vacuum impulse, which probably meant it wasn't really the best engine for the job here because we are gonna be spending most of that burn Quite low down in Hydrus's atmosphere, but it still does the job. And after achieving orbit with this craft, I think we still have about 1,300 meters per second of delta V, or thereabouts left in order to perform our rendezvous and docking with the mothership, which is more than enough. We probably only needed about 200 meters per second or thereabouts, but it's nice to have a bit of a margin because you never know what could go wrong. Things could go absolutely terribly wrong and we could end up in a bit of a sticky situation indeed. But here we are just performing our burn to circularize our orbit or to actually achieve our orbit. And in the blink of an eye, I cut out all of the rendezvous maneuvering and all of that rubbish because, well, I I've showed it quite a lot on the series anyway. And to be honest, there are better things. There are other things that I wanted to be showcasing from this mission, like me designing this where I cannot redock this section of the mission to the main craft. So I sat there for a good few minutes thinking, what on earth am I going to do? So I decided, well, let's take the capsule that we're gonna be sending back to road. We're gonna undock that from the mothership. It's nice and thin and narrow. There's loads of room for this to fit on. We'll dock this to the Hydrus lander section, transfer across all of the science and then just leave that lander floating precariously in space whilst we attach this back to the mothership. Yep, it means that we're not gonna be sending that Hydrus lander back to road, but that was never the plan anyway. And we are just going to leave that there. And with that being done, it's time to do the next section of this mission, which will be to go to Hydrus's moon, Hydron. And we're going to send some landers down there and we're also going to send a scan sat over at the same time as well. Like I said, I, I just want to I want to completely cover all of my bases for Hydrus in this one mission, except send a flying machine or sending crew. We, 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 will, we will send crew later on in this series. Absolutely. One thing about the series that I do want to do eventually is have some sort of working crewed base on pretty much every system. So every planet in the Tempest system every all over Kerbal I just want everywhere to have some sort of Kerbal life on there with big bases and self-sufficient colonies it's gonna be it's gonna be great and hopefully we can do that so we will return with a crew to Hydrus eventually what we are doing now though however is releasing the scan sat for this section of the mission obviously we want to put it into a polar orbit so we can cover the entire celestial body with our scanner and I'm trying to reach as far out. My, my orbit, I want to push it out as far as I can possibly go without actually leaving Hydron Sphere of Influence because the scanners that we do have on this, they do require us to be at quite a high altitude. Obviously, Hydron Sphere of Influence is very, very small. 
So we're not going to be able to utilize these scanners to the best of their ability, but we can still use them. It's not like in RSS, where if you go to Phobos or Deimos with Scansat installed, you absolutely cannot use them because their sphere of influences are minuscule. I think it's about 50 kilometers and you're suddenly back in Mars orbit. Yeah, and most of the scan sats, you need to have a minimum altitude of about 100 kilometers, so you can't scan those at all, which is a bit annoying. But luckily, like I mentioned, we are able to scan this and we put it into a nice polar orbit, returned back to the mothership. And now what we are going to be doing is sending our first lander down. And I think, if I recall correctly, this one is going to land in the highlands. And what I was doing here, I was trying to get this to a point that was very close to two separate biomes. And then what I could do is I could do a little bit of a hop and try and get a couple of biomes with just this one lander. So I do have two landers and I wanted both landers to visit two separate biomes. And then that way, I think... I can't even remember the name of the moon. Hydron. Hydron has four biomes in total. So, two landers, two separate biomes, and we should be able to cover the entirety of Hydron, and everything should be fantastic. But we have landed this now, and we are going to do the world's shortest hop after gaining all of the science that we possibly could. Look, look, look how far we have to go. Th this is... The distance between two biomes. I, I, I got it almost spot on, to be honest, between the two biomes, which was fantastic. Yes, we are now at the slopes. We were at the highlands and we can gain ourselves a lot more science from this biome and then send ourselves back on our merry way up to the mothership where we will dock, transfer all the science and, you know, do all of that jazz. Anyway, I did say earlier on in the video, I'd probably talk a little bit about where I've been, why I haven't been uploading. I'm a uni student. And I've just finished my spring term, I guess. Yeah, maybe winter term. I don't know. But there, there was a problem with it because obviously I mentioned in a post like two months ago that my, my mum fell ill and that was really bad. I then fell ill. I entered something called diabetic ketoacidosis, which is really, really not good because my insulin pump that I wear on my body at all times, it broke and I just was not having a very good time. Because of that, I missed a load of uni work. I had to catch up on a load of the uni work. Now that my term has finished, I've actually had the chance to go back and start playing KSB and start filming things again. So that's where I've been. It's been a bit of a rough ride, but it's just something that <laughs> something that happens. And yeah, like I said, I'm ill again now with a cold that's definitely not COVID. It's not been a good few months, but it's good to come back to these videos and start doing voiceover again. It's, it's weird doing this voiceover. It's, it's been two months since I've done anything like this and just talking to yourself in an empty room. You, my neighbours probably think I'm absolutely nuts, but <laughs> it's, it's what we do. Uh, it's what we like to see. Anyway, this is now the second mission, I think. Yes, and we landed. We landed this originally in the ravines, and then I saw the only other place that we had left to go to was the Bleak Peaks. That last landing was a little bit weird, a little bit tight due to the fact that we were on a massive slope. I really liked this view of Hydrus from Hydron there, which is why I kept that in the video. I thought that looked very, very nice indeed. Anyway, we are now returning to the mothership with the first, no, the second one of these missions. I left the first one in a stable orbit around Hydron and I thought, you know what, it's going to take two days to get our rendezvous with it. Let's launch the other one. Let's, let's land the other one and then we'll deal with that once we've done everything with the second mission. And rather than just leaving these attached to the mothership, what I'm going to do with these is I am going to try and put them roughly opposite sides of Hydron because they do have these relay antennas on them. And I'm thinking in the future, if we ever say set down a base on the surface of Hydron, it would be nice to have constant communications with them. So rather than just, you know, ditching them and letting them break up or sending them screaming into the surface of Hydron, well, we'll, we'll give them a use, which will be kind of nice. Anyway, that is the second one all done now. We have transferred across all of our science and we are going to do the exact same thing with this. Flip it prograde, burn out so that we are a 
little bit higher than we were and then circularize our orbit around hydrogen. And you can see they are roughly 180 degrees apart, which is kind of where we want them to be. I haven't got their orbital periods perfect. I, I didn't really want to mess around with it too much. If I would have spent a lot of time, I probably could have matched their orbital periods to be exactly the same. And then that way they would never shift out of their orbits, which would be really nice. But to be honest, it was just kind of like an afterthought for this mission. So I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Close enough is going to be fine. Anyway, we have now burnt our way back to Hydrus because I want to be in a Hydrus orbit to plot my manoeuvre to return to Rode. What I did there was I actually burnt into Hydrus, so that piece of debris will go smashing into the planet, and then we took the very important, the very critical science package that has all of our data, and we just attached it to the front. This thing looked huge when we sent it to over to Hydrus in the first place, and now it is just a tiny little stubby box on the end of a rather large amount of fuel tank yeah, it, it looks kind of comical <laughs> by the end of this. It started off so big and grand. And now it is tiny and very small. So what we did there is we started burning back towards road. However, because this maneuver was one year and 344 days after I plotted it, something changed and we actually ended up going deeper within the Tempest system. Luckily, we had about 9,000 meters per second of Delta V on this stage anyway. So, after performing that burn, we cancelled that, we counteracted that burn, and then we plotted out a better manoeuvre to go to road. And this time we can see, well, we are actually going to get back home, which is much, much better than going off somewhere near Fury. I honestly don't know what happened there, but it seems that if you leave a craft and come back to it, sometimes the manoeuvre nodes can get a little bit messed up, and it can cause weird things like that to happen. But we are able to get back to the safety of our home planet. We release this little science package and we are going to try and re-enter through Rhodes' atmosphere and hopefully not burn to a crisp as we come down. Everything is fine. Everything is okay. And just like that, we get through the worst of it. We deploy the parachutes and there we go. That is our Hydrus mission all done. This is all that remains, one tiny little cylinder that contains enough science for, I, I don't know, a lot of unlocks in the research and development building. There we go. We have 3,884 science in total now. So what we are going to do is we are going to come and spend it. We're going to buy specialized radiators. We're going to improve our nuclear technology quite a way with a couple of new nuclear tech nodes that we are going to pick up. With those radiators, it does mean that we can start using some of the far future technology engines, which are great. They're massive. They've got 9,500 specific impulse in vacuum. It's going to be glorious. And we will be seeing some of those soon. We'll also be seeing some weird floating trees, which was a bit of an odd occurrence. But anyway, thank you for watching. I've been Kanasa, and I will see you later.